Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks. Our guest today is Kenan Zekic. Welcome, Kenan. Hello, Dennis. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. It's fantastic to have you here. Thanks. Tell us about you and your work. Yeah, that's always this awkward question. Tell us something. <laughs> but that is the only way to, to get into this. So uh, uh, I come... Uh, I live in uh, Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, but actually I come from uh, uh, Zenza, that small city, 70 kilometers from here, steel plant city. And uh, so that, that's uh, where I'm coming from. And uh, it, I guess we all agree who are into this job. At one point, we all, all wanted to be painters, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but uh, I never managed to be a painter because I went for the design. So. Uh, my struggle for design and uh, education started a long time ago because my parents wouldn't let me study the Academy of Fine Arts, actually the, the high school of uh, applied arts, because it was far away from my hometown. And then it was this constant struggle for it. So, and then in the end, I managed to, to get enrolled to the Academy of Fine Arts in Sarajevo after my second try, because it was very competitive back then. It was in the 90s. And how it worked, it was like, in former Yugoslavia, we had six big academies in Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, Macedonia. And the last one was uh, the last uh, entry exam was in Sarajevo. So all those who did not manage to pass through the exams were coming to Sarajevo. And it was so competitive in September, like 200 candidates, 300 candidates for, for the product design, what I was interested in. So I managed, I get in. And I was so happy, so thrilled that I'm finally studying product design. Although my parents never actually realized what am I studying. <laughs> so, so, but uh, on the third year of, of my education, the third year, uh, I was interrupted by the war. And the war stopped uh, my regular education. And uh, it was uh, really, really a uh, uh, heavy experience. I've been in Bosnia throughout the war completely at all in all shapes uh, I experienced the war in all shapes I mean full package from from being a soldier to being civilian to being humanitarian worker I mean and I was lucky that I survived I mean a lot of my friends did not make it but I mean that's kind of experience that changes you uh, definitely scars you but also changes your perception about everything including your perception of of the art and design and how does it work especially if you are in that like early 20s stage when you are kind of grasping all the knowledge and then it all kind of is shattered by by this so you have to regroup and continue to 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 move on from there but still though you continue to exist in this <clears throat> kind of design mode I mean, although it sounds like really funny but that, that's i mean i remember for example uh, at one point uh, i was one of three or four students that were in sarah academy so you enter the building you hear the shelling and you are the only guy inside <laughs> and professor is waiting i mean but these things actually uh, kind of help me understand this personal space of freedom that you can always have while doing this job. <laughs> so that's like your yeah, personal getaway, like escape. That's total es escapism. I know, I know <laughs> the, the, the harsh conditions and super extreme ones. But then you realize, yeah, I have this moment is going to always stay with me so I can isolate myself in this creative kind of uh, thing that I'm doing. So, so, yeah, and what's interesting was like, uh, I was studying in three countries without ever leaving the country, like traveling without moving. So I started to study in former Yugoslavia, continued the study in the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and finished my studies in uh, post-war Bosnia and Herzegovina, that was kind of Dayton, that was just state, no republic. So that's, but that's interesting for me because I experienced three totally different educational models <laughs> by being in the same place, experiencing completely different things. I'm not saying all of them were uh, super bad or super good, but uh, I've just been through that. Yeah, uh, and what actually changed my understanding of design uh, during this time is uh, getting uh, in touch with Viktor Papanek, design for the real world. So that was kind of, yeah, you see, 
Yeah, he he speaks about us. He speaks uh, about design in those places like, like we are. I mean, we were really desperate in terms of that. So that's uh, and that social impact design always remained with me. Uh, from that point on and uh, the empathy and understanding the context and I'm always context, context, context. And that's kind of helped me uh, uh, grow up and mature into, in, into this kind of uh, position of towards design education that I have today. So like, yeah, uh, I, I realized early, like necessity is the mother of invention. I'm, but truly is necessity is the mother of invention and uh, uh, definitely uh, the scarcity is are pushing you to provide to 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 develop something better than you can ever imagine that you could do without anything. So uh, so I started my career as uh, as uh, as a designer with the International Committee of the Red Cross. <laughs> that was my first professional engagement uh, during uh, because I started working for them like uh, as as a designer somewhere around the end of the war or beginning of uh, ninety six. So they offered me a position like, that was really funny. Like we have never had designer employed international committee of the Red Cross. So you will be the first one. So I was, yes. <laughs> and that was really amazing experience because I mean, uh, in the in, right after the war, I was so privileged that I got the computer, that I got all this software, that I was exposed to technology and I was really happy to have it to learn. But Although on the other hand of that package was me working for the uh, for the International Committee of the Red Cross that was dealing with the war consequences. And then you see that there is design everywhere. And uh, for me, the beginning uh, of my design career was totally in social impact design because I was dealing with, with the landmines, I was dealing with the refugees, I was dealing with all these kind, kinds of things that, uh, that you would never associate with design, but they are. They are so they are much more associated than we think. So and that's kind of something that stayed with me. This, as I mentioned, social impact design. So I continued my career working for the other international agencies, and then the industry got back slowly here. I mean, it's super slow. It is. Uh, it has never returned completely. I mean, uh, how to say? Uh, uh, I live in society that's in state of permanent crisis. Just the other day, I was talking to to friend of mine. Said, "Listen, we grew up and matured, and we never were living in functional society. <laughs> I mean, so that that's how it was. And then uh, it kind of changes uh, your perception of design terms that it is resilient. Mm. It's resilient, very resilient activity if you are dedicated to it. And no matter what, no matter." Uh, how harsh circumstances are it exists and it's going to continue to exist despite despite everything so uh when i finished the academy uh i was working 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 for the for all kind of things i mean the the, the my motto was massimo vignelli if you can design one thing you can design everything but <laughs> But uh, it was not like I decided so. No, I decided to live on design, but I was not able to, to pick. So I'm going to work only this. I was educated as a product designer, but uh, and this kind of attitude pushed me to learn. And I remain this learning mode <laughs> forever. So if you don't know, you're going to sit and learn. You're going to learn bio stuff. You're going to learn with help from other people and uh, I adopted early the habit of being team player. You cannot do it by yourself. <laughs> Design is not uh, a single man show. I mean, it is when you're in twenties, <laughs> when you're a student, when you are hyping for it. And it's good to go through that phase, but uh, as years are passing by, you realize, yeah, but I cannot do it by myself. But it's okay. I mean, we need to go through all these phases. So somewhere around 2000, uh, I got scholarship from Tempus, it's EU foundation, sometimes like, something like Erasmus today, I'd say so. And I had this modular uh, master in uh, London Metropolitan, uh, in Bologna University and in Bosnia. So it took me three years and it was really kind of uh, uh, something that I needed. Uh, I, I, I was feeling the time missing something from education I needed to, to get more into the education, to, to get 
mode of education for myself. And I was so lucky that I got it. And it was it was an amazing study. It was about cultural studies. It was about uh, tourism as well. So uh, my my master thesis was about uh, it was in 2003, four something like that, uh, like uh, how to develop culture product based on design thinking methodology. And it was really fresh. And I was referring to models of of, of Finland and and Sweden and their practices. And I was amazed. How, how a strategically design was involved in budgeting of the countries. I mean, that's completely opposite end of position where I am, but I was trying to understand that the better practices, so can we apply some of those? And I was lucky that back then I was working as a consultant for the British Council and uh, they, they were happy to, to, to provide me uh, they allowed me to use the project I was working on with them about cultural heritage and uh, uh, reconciliation and design aspect of it, how to put people together. Which, I mean, all, all this, uh, uh, from my point, it was like, this is really about designing not only uh, uh, the visuals, this is about designing experience, this is about designing uh, communication, this is about strategically utilizing design. And that was topic of, of my master's thesis. Uh, throughout all of this time, I was practicing. I was doing my practice uh, and working in all kinds of agencies. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, marketing agency, McKen Erickson, uh, J. Walter Thompson. Uh, I mean, all kinds of things that you, all this drill that you have to go through a, a, as a young designer, but my passion was also, uh, my hands were also on the product design. So I was I was all over the place learning all the time, and uh, that's uh, how it. But uh, in terms of education, I, I, my last kind of education circle was like like 2016, 17. I got this uh, fellowship from Fulbright program, and I was in the United States at Penn State University, and uh, exploring learning design and education possibilities, and also doing my professional affiliation in in. San Francisco with Frog, so it was an amazing experience. But I, I, I see I never stop. I, I don't plan to stop educating myself <laughs> because that would be really uh, interesting. So that's a little bit, I mean, short, short story about <laughs> this. That's, that's fantastic, fantastic. So tell us about the work you're doing now. Uh, okay, so uh, right now I'm uh, kind of, uh, I'm transiting. <laughs> uh, I left the institution where I was working as a full professor. Uh, it was time to move on and I decided to go on and kind of going back to industry. And uh, after spending 13, 14 years in education without ever losing my practice, uh, you kind of have different angle to it. So uh, I, I'm now back to... to uh, I mean, to industry, but uh, it's not going to be like it was, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. Now I have this education angle that I'd like to utilize, uh, this structured view towards the, the, the profession, also more uh, critique about uh, everything. I mean, a little bit of knowledge and experience uh, is there that comes with the years. So, uh, I'm, <laughs> so I'm starting this uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, it's inno innovation, design, and education, and I call it Indie Plus C, shortened Indie. And uh, I'm in the process of uh, registering now, and it goes kind of slowly here because, you know, a lot of administration thing going on. And uh, the other track is I'm working with uh, with a friend of mine, I mean, that I met a uh, professional, he engaged me professionally like 15, 18 years ago for the first time. And uh, from that on, we managed to stay in contact and work together. So it's a publishing house. And the uh, publishing house that's, that, that, cover, that has also two tracks. One is the classical literature, like modern, classical, and contemporary. Uh, we, and books I'm interested in, I mean, from ever. And uh, I, I like experimenting with extended reading experience. And what we are trying to, to, to do in this track, and right now we are doing kind of uh, uh, 
revisiting a book that has been that was published in 1974 for the first time and we are revisiting it because it's kind of a, a 500 year old manuscript about chronicles of sarajevo and we are kind of uh, trying to to see it we went through very heavy uh, hard editing process but also uh kind of really hardcore research about the, the book itself because it's been kept here in the in the library for 500 years and we got access to it so uh, I, I went through it I uh, wanted to explore the, its 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 uh, physical appearance mm -hmm. beside its structural appearance in terms of typography and then you then you realize all kind of things from 500 year old manuscript that well there is not much structure to it <laughs> And now we are kind of extending it because I propose, I mean, since we are doing it, let's let's kind of really extend it. So uh, we are including kind of uh, reading uh, audio inserts, then extending it to YouTube and uh, connecting it through 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 all kind of uh, uh, experience. Also, the tactile we are uh, the, the book is going to be kind of uh, a replica of the original one but uh, interpreted it through contemporary uh, printing techniques. So it's it's layered project. So, but the other check is uh, this uh, educational uh, platform, electronic educational platform that's kind of coincide with all this that's happening right now with COVID and I mean, still, we are still in COVID, but we started working on this in 2019 before the COVID, so it kind of pushed us through. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, uh, yeah, it sounds everything, but uh, right at this moment, uh, I, I cannot not to mention that uh, we are experiencing the biggest political crisis in this country after the war in the 90s. We don't know what's going to happen in the next six months. I mean, maybe countries <laughs> is going to collapse, maybe it's going to get divided. They mentioned again, they're mentioning again war. I mean, it's really, really hard, hard hard time right now going on. But despite you have to work on, I mean, you must continue. I mean, and that's kind of, uh, when you're constantly working parallel on two tracks, it kind of slows you down, but it, it never stops you. <laughs> so, so so that's, that's kind of uh, uh, interesting. So these are things that I'm working on uh, at the moment. So, uh, I don't know. Did I answer this? Yeah, this but is I fantastic. Mean... Uh, we'll we'll talk, like, talk more about your education, uh, your digital stuff later on. But first, tell us, how did you get into teaching? Ah, which uh, uh, teaching? So, uh, actually, I was, you know, that's, you know, uh, I don't know, do you, but I, this, like, one of the things, oh, I want to try this, <laughs> like bungee jumping. And I really interested. I was really interested in, in, in teaching while I was a student still. Mm. And, and I've been invited by my professor of mine just before the war so to, to join the team and kind of start working them in next semester. But never, next semester never happened <laughs> in okay. that shape because war broke up. Uh, to, to work with them as a student assistant, uh, yeah. student demonstrator. So I never yeah. got to it. And uh, it was... 90, 92, 92, yeah, never happened. But uh, in 2004 or 5, I've been invited by this uh, newly established small university that, it, that was kind of initiating its visual arts and communication design program to join the team, help them establish and start teaching. And I applied and I passed. Yeah. But at that time, I was not uh, totally into education because I had a small company. We had my life is also a designer. We run a small uh, kind of company, and we were working. But in two thousand eight, uh, after being two years kind of uh, part time lecture, I decided to 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 switch on to a full time. I mean, interesting about teaching career is like the first time you get there, you are totally focused on the course, on the content. And then you go, yeah, but is this course really working with other courses? <laughs> <laughs> is this really the best one? Mm -hmm. I mean, and then you start, uh, then you learn how to learn mm. to become better teacher. And mm -hmm. that's the ongoing process that, that never stopped. So uh, yeah, I, I was really thrilled that I'm gonna get into 
into teaching because I fi finally found time to dedicate completely myself to a structured uh, content that should be delivered. And I always had in mind how I did not want to learn and how should I avoid <laughs> mistakes I realized with my previous uh, professors, etc. Mm. So mm. let's... Mm. And once you start doing it, you find yourself making the same mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that, that was interesting. The first course I was teaching was uh, kind of, uh, I, I developed this course, Visual Language, uh, about basics of visual design, graphic design, not graphic design, but uh, kind of uh, visual culture, visual culture, understanding the, the composition, getting more into the design. Uh, I moved from there, I progressed towards the uh, typography mm -hmm. because typography is my really passion uh, in terms of, of graphic design. I love typography and that was a really amazing experience for me to uh, finally find time and place to, to talk about it in a more elaborate way. And mm -hmm. typography, uh, I was on it for 15, 14 years, but I also moved towards design studios to to they would say to the maker spaces. <laughs> so so uh, design studios were also my, my passion. And the uh, last five years, four, five years, I was into the UX design and uh, the, uh, design thinking methodologies, working with students. So both, I mean, all of them are related, but, uh, but I started really early, uh, right after the Design UK Design Council, published the first uh, uh, double diamond double diamond yeah uh, I was just finishing my my study in London and it was really fresh and said this is what we need to tell <laughs> students this is structure I mean that's, that was yeah. 2004 2005 yeah. you remember that yeah. I guess yeah of course so it's and it stayed it stayed with me and there's not that I'm not critiquing it there are a lot, a lot of gaps in this especially today. But I mean, that that was kind of my, my experience with teaching. But what was uh, important for me while, during teaching is, I mean, he cannot take us too seriously. I mean, uh, education process, uh, faculty, I mean, university, it's, it's a pit stop in, in someone's career. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they're going to stop, they're going to grasp and take whatever they can they're gonna move on some of them are gonna stay some of them are gonna find the track that's going to attach them to academy but those those young youngsters when they start they're just youngsters when they are finishing they are your colleagues <laughs> yeah. that, that's how it is so it's like we are there to facilitate and i was trying to learn facility but not uh, i mean maybe because of my experiences but i was uh, always kind of blatantly uh, honest with students i mean not rude but let's let's talk let's be direct in in terms of the projects i mean let's be talk and uh, question everything yeah today is the time to question everything if you can question your parents you can definitely question your professor absolutely Every, everything is checkable now you as can long, check as long as you do it in a way that 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 follows a certain uh, logic and structure Absolutely, yes. I mean, everything, everything is questionable. So uh, I was saying, question everything. Don't hesitate to ask. Don't hesitate to interrupt. That's your right. That's why we are here. No one knows everything. Absolutely. And we are also learning from students. And definitely, I mean, you cannot kind of preach without understanding the, 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 the audience. And definitely, I, I learned a lot from students. Absolutely. I really learned, le Absolutely. learned a lot from students and I'm still learning and I'm really happy that I can, when I see some of them today after the, I mean, after the school, after they finished, it's like colleagues, <laughs> full respect. Fantastic, fantastic. So how do you see uh, the current issue of employability? So how can we best help the students translate what they're doing in education into a career? uh depends depends mm -hmm. where you are i mean uh how it's not the same if i do it in bosnia or you do it in spain or you do it in the united states markets are different you, i mean i cannot give the same advice i can i can uh, i could uh, advise i mean uh, i can preach what i know 
yeah. but uh, to utilize uh, what I'm trying to, uh, what I was trying to develop in work with students, I, and I hope I will do it again uh, at one point, uh, is uh, understanding the context is going to enable you to be more efficient as a creative professional. Uh, and adaptability and just to be uh, to adjust yourself towards the context not to to bend the knee yeah. but to understand it that to understand completely uh, to deliver and always uh, i mean kind of trying to try to understand the capacities the needs but you have to be armed with knowledge <laughs> mm -hmm. You must be. You mm -hmm. be, must be. Uh, it goes if you are armed with knowledge. If you mm -hmm. if you are armed with with uh, with arrogance, it's not going to happen. So mm -hmm. empathy and knowledge, I think, is the key. Uh, everything else is kind of tools. Yeah. I mean, all all the other things are the tools. But, but I I really think that design is a kind of sensitive sensitive being, and it's kind of a sensor should be sensor that is going to detect society as it is and it's not only about uh, it's not only about i'm going to deliver the service i'm going to deliver the product i'm going to deliver whatever you want from me uh, i really believe that each each designer is educator i mean your work is public yeah. <laughs> once you finish with your work it becomes public publicly available and people are going to be exposed to your work and you're going to be exposed to to critique so be ready to embrace all of it and uh, accept it and fix the next one. But definitely you can influence. I mean, I don't believe in revolution anymore. <laughs> I, I quit that. So I believe in, in the individual revolution. Mm -hmm. I believe that each of us, by changing our personally, uh, and we can do it uh, as a designer because we are producing public work, we are educating in small bits and pieces and we are creating this, this new culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope it is so. Because it is so, it's happening in, in, in uh, highly developed countries. I mean, the, the way design appears and the way design has been uh, uh, adopted in society, you can see the level of uh, society development, isn't it? Like in UK, you can you can compare UK, you can compare Boston, you can see the general visual culture uh, as just a, a, a first glance of, of the society, it, it explains a lot. Yeah. So that, that's <laughs> how I see it. Mm -hmm. So if, if there were no limitations, how would you do design education differently? Would you change anything? I mean, if I don't think that uh, uh, education is going to change that soon. No, about you, you would you change anything if you could? If you if there was no limitations, I don't know. So yes, definitely, I I, I would I would change professors. <laughs> <laughs> we must change. Change is not coming from the students. Yeah, students are like. Students are coming from their context uh, in, in the process of their, their growing and maturing and trying to find themselves. But professors like kind of uh, static, I mean, uh, education professionals, uh, all of us, they, we need to have this intrinsic motivation to change our uh, ability to teach and to advance the teaching. I mean, what happened during the COVID? We, see, we saw that... that, that Education is being so exposed with all uh, uh, deficiencies. <laughs> so really, so now we realize like, oh, I don't even have to go there to get education. And on the other side, you had kind of, uh, you, you have not uh, uh, super efficient feedback from, from the uh, education community because you see that technology is, present but not really utilized in its best possible way so i think uh, and it's exposed how weak we are all of us so uh, working constantly on uh, adjusting uh, ourselves towards the, the the knowledge that's shaping reshaping i can speak in context of design education i cannot speak yeah about course, the education course. in general but uh, i think that, yes. yeah I, but I, I think that design education cannot remain kind of uh, uh, siloed 
we need to be able to to change the course from the day one until the day the, the last day of the semester we need to be able to react to things we, we need we, we 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 have to be not only reactive but proactive in terms of that yeah. and, I, and i and i would lean more into the uh, not open curriculum but uh, uh, open uh, uh, kind of attitude towards interpretation of the content based on, on on facts and based on experiences that could be adjusted during the work and i think that 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 thing I, I would change so uh, it's us <laughs> we must change fantastic so tell us a bit more about your new uh, digital education startup sorry i didn't you... hear uh, tell us a bit more about your digital education startup you mentioned uh -huh. so uh this is uh, actually the, the 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 blended learning model that uh, it started in 2019 the the company I'm working with right now, uh, since we're producing like textbooks for the elementary elementary schools, uh, we realize it's not gonna soon. It's not gonna be sufficient because because we know why technology and uh, everything changed changed a lot, and the whole perception of of uh, and I was utilizing my experiences from higher education as yeah. perception of, of reading and perception of, of learning and attention span and kids and all kinds of things. I mean, we need to move on. So we, we adopted this uh, a platform that was developed in uh, by CLAT Germany, German publishing uh, uh, agency house. And they, are, they were using it uh, so in different shapes and forms in in Germany, in Croatia. So we we, we took the platform, but we are uh, developing the content. So it's it's kind of uh, addition to existing textbooks, but it's uh, it's about blended learning model, but also uh, enables enables us to to engage all these kind of. Uh, uh, new approaches and I'm particularly interested in gamification of of this uh, this gamification part of that so that's that's the thing we are trying to work on but you know the, the, what is the problem I mean you have the idea you even invest something but you have no support mm -hmm. uh, there is no uh, I mean just to illustrate how com com complex it is uh, we are so divided. We are so divided that we have like 13 ministries of education in a country that has less than 3 million people. So none of these 13 ministries of education has uh, any, any kind of procedure. There is no legislation about digital, digital textbooks or digital education. So you have to do it by yourself. You have to implement it by yourself. And uh, it's hard. And it's really tough. But... Uh, I see that's 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 how you change things. Yeah, you create impact, social impact by yourself, and you hope that someday is going to be recognized. So I don't know how is that uh, going to continue. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I hope we'll make it. But I mean, that is the attitude that we are working on it uh, for two years now. So far, we have I don't know more than four thousand subscribers to it. It's not paid, so we. We we provided with all the textbooks we are we are uh, kind of producing here. Yeah. So we we'll, we'll see how it's gonna work. Fantastic, fantastic. How can our viewers and listeners best find you? Yeah, uh, uh, the easiest way be, would be to 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 connect on LinkedIn, but also mm -hmm. I have uh, my uh, kenanzekic uh, dot com. Uh, some of my works are there. And you can also ping me, although I'm not active on, on Facebook, but I have the account. I mean, you, you, you can connect, but the easiest way would be through through LinkedIn profile. Fantastic, fantastic. And what advice you'd like to leave us with? No one wants to hear advice. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, there's a thing that I learned so many, heard so many years ago. It's like, it's about, I mean, about about the judgment, like uh, good judgment comes from from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. <laughs> so, Fantastic. Well, so thank you so much. Thank, thank you so you. much, Kenan. Thank you, Lefteris. Thank well, you so much for inviting me. Thanks a lot. Keep thank in you. touch. Keep in touch. All the best. Definitely. Thank you, and thank best. you. Bye -bye. Thanks Bye -bye. to your listeners. Bye. -bye.